What's going on everybody? Thanks so much for dropping by the channel. I wanted to take a quick minute and make a video. It explains how I hacked into my Elgato key light systems. And for those people who do not know what an Elgato key light system is, it's basically a little light that you can control using Wi-Fi. And it's for people who play, play games or use it for video conferencing, etc. It's just a more professional way of lighting up your room. And it's thus the reason why I have one. So what I did is I'm actually gonna make this video pretty short. I don't wanna make it very in-depth and detailed. It's gonna have a little bit of information for those people who like to program and wanna get you know started off on the right foot. Or it's also for the people who are just an owner of the Elgato key light systems who just want the application itself, which I'll provide if you stick around to the end of the video. So you got an Elgato key light and you want to do a little something extra with it. Well, I'm right there with you. I know exactly how you feel. Whatever that extra thing is, um, for me, it was getting up early in the morning, working nine months straight, 12 hour days, not to mention the vlogs and after activities. It's hard for me to get up in the morning. So my thing was to set it up to be like an alarm clock. I wanted a light to come on at a specific time to wake me up. With that said, what if I'm off one day and I don't want to, I don't want to change the alarm each day. I want to, I want to have it programmed throughout the whole entire week so that my off day doesn't wake me up at 6:20 or 6:15 in the morning. Well, here is the steps that I took to figure it out. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to fire up Wireshark. Wireshark is like a packet analyzing software. Basically, any traffic that you send or receive from your computer, it's going to be able to inspect that traffic and look at the packets that are being sent. In this case, it's going to be to the Elgato key light. So we're going to send traffic, web traffic to the light. Light is going to uh, respond and then it's going to give us information back. That's the information that we want to capture. Now I do want to make a quick side note. If you have any type of security implications, it would uh, involve you requiring authorization to run some kind of software like this. Make sure you do so because you can get in a lot of trouble. Um, if it's at home, it should be relatively safe, especially if you're doing it on your own network. With that said, let's go ahead and kick off uh, Wireshark. Now I don't know if um, you guys are familiar with this, but uh, so we're gonna go ahead and kick it off for that Ethernet port, and I'm gonna generate traffic. And I don't know if you guys use this, but uh, this is like always the clunkiest thing. So this can uh, turn the color and turn down the light, and obviously you can see what's happening in the room as I'm doing this stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and stop that traffic. Now the first thing that I did whenever I was initially like looking for the Elgato key, which we can see right here, boom, it's perfectly and uh, clean. Uh, clear, clear daylight. You have the destination IP address. Um, looks like on my network it is dot one three seven. Didn't even plan that. Not even the slightest bit. Okay, so my IP is obviously this two dot sixty address. So we know it is sending HTTP GET requests. So if I look up HTTP filter out HTTP traffic, you can see it's pretty much all between me and the Elgato key light, which is awesome. That's exactly what I want. Okay, now that we have that traffic, let's go ahead and see what kind of information is available. So let me go through, see what we got here. Ah, this is interesting. JavaScript objects, member key, number of lights, number of lights, array, lights, object, on, wow. Look at all this information. This is basically exactly what we need. So, so basically it tells me that the Elgato key light is running a web server. Um, it's basically sending HTTP traffic using put, get, and uh, post request between my computer and the key light. Okay, so now that we can see those requests actually happening in real time, um, what I want to do is go ahead and just grab a bit of information from one of the put requests. The put request again is going to be information from my computer to the light that tells it to do something. Um, so right here, we have some, uh, some text that we can use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this as printable text, put it in a notepad real quick, and what we care about is just this last little bit, right? So what I can do now is I can open up uh, Python, my IDE, um, which is spider, and I'm going to go into the console, what I'm going to type is requests, well first we're going to import requests, then we're going to type in requests.get HTTP and then the IP address of this device, which is 
which is right here, it's 192.168.2.137. And we can see in the line below in the Wireshark capture that it's sending traffic to port 9123. So we'll just go ahead and type that in, 2.168.2.137 port 9123. And it's important to realize that it's sending it to this location, Elgato Lights. Now, we can type in JSON equals, and then put this in here, this little information that we copied and pasted earlier, and um, probably get some information. We'll put dot content, so uh, hopefully, oh, we gotta close this. Okay, content, without syntax. So what it wants is actually a comma between uh, the web, web URL and JSON. I don't know how I missed that. But anyways, once you put that in there, you can actually change the brightness down. Let's like see 50 and see what happens. Boom. You basically just hack your Elgato key light. From a security standpoint, a little concerning, uh, especially considering that it's pretty much wide open, that you can just send whatever request you want. So I just turned the brightness back up to 100. Now I can use zero for the on uh, key that it has in it. And boom, it turns the light completely out. So light back on, and let's just see if we can modify the temperature. Two, four, five. Yep, and it changes a different temperature as well. Now it was at this point that I wanted to go down a pretty deep rabbit hole and basically write my own API to be able to manage and control this, this device. Good news is, Somebody has already done it for us. So for me and for you guys, we don't have to do all that extra work. Somebody created uh, an interface, an API called Pi Leg Light, where they basically went through the same exact steps that I did and invested all the time to create their own GitHub repository. And I'll link that in the description below so you have that available. Um, so after about two weeks of using this API and constantly launching my, my programming console here in running the code over and over and over to be able to just control the light. I got tired of that and I said I want to make a graphical user interface that basically manages and controls the light on a schedule that I can just create and then have it sent out to anyone who wants to use it completely user friendly. And that's what this video was initially going to be about. That little graphical user interface ended up taking me probably over 24 hours to write. So with that said and for brevity, I'm going to go ahead and just show you how it works and then provide the link for it. Okay, so back over to Python. Um, basically, uh, here we go. Uh, this is all the code that I wrote to create this graphical user interface. I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Now, it might seem a little intimidating at first because there's a lot of fields and a lot of buttons and a lot of things to click. Let me just walk you through the steps. I promise you it's easy. So first thing you want to do, which this is written in Python and the application module that I used was called tkinter. You can see a couple of libraries here. Import time, I use the module uh, tkinter as well as leglight and the request library or module if you want to call it that in uh, Python. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on auto discover and it's going to search the network and actually find the IP address of my device. That saves a lot of time, it's super convenient. I couldn't leave that feature out because having individual users have to go through and actually manually type this in could be kind of a, a huge pain. Again, if you have more than one light, this might be a problem. Just make sure to delete any extra stuff that you have there. And then once you've done so, go ahead and click on connect. It'll connect. Once you see that, that text there, it says you are connected. You now can turn the light off, turn it on. You can adjust the brightness all the way down below all the way back up. You can also adjust the temperature to cool or to warm. Now, that's not the coolest feature about this. The coolest feature to me was being able to create essentially an alarm clock that'll turn on the light at a specific time of the day and slowly increment each few seconds, one or two, three ticks until it's fully completely bright and illuminated. And that's good for me because that means if I'm sleeping, it kind of is like the sun coming up, getting bright, and waking me up. And I think that's a much better way to waking up than... <laughs> Dude, I just can't win. Okay, so, um, so time change. We're going ahead and turn this on. So if you enter the time now, it'll, it'll just go ahead and kick off and start running. So we'll go ahead and turn it to uh, 2330, which is in one minute. 
and we'll have the schedule run until 2335 and for every five seconds we want it to increase the brightness by 10. So let's go ahead and turn it all the way down and click on run the schedule. It is 30 now so every five seconds you'll see the brightness of the light actually increase by five or 10, 10 brightness levels. So within 10 increments which is 10 times 5 50 seconds it'll be all the way up to the maximum brightness which is again a much more pleasant way of waking up in the morning so that's pretty much it that's how it works you can set it for every day of the week I'm gonna go ahead and set it for my schedule which is actually <laughs> go ahead and stop the schedule stop it from running and then uh, it's on Sunday <sighs> 6 15 6 15 in the morning that's what time I'm gonna wake up Okay, also, there are three important things, very important things. First of all, again, as a reminder, the key light, it only works for one on your network. So if you have more than one key light on your same network, you can run into an issue. It's not gonna break anything, but what it will do is it could throw an error or you could get like a little additional IP address that's added into the IP address field. Just clean it up, use one, and it'll work. If I get enough people to say they want another one, I'll make another. I'll make I'll, I'll make it work for five key lights. All right. <laughs> I just need you guys to let me know in the comments below. Number two, you might get a pop up or some kind of warning sign from Microsoft or from your antivirus software when you try to run this application. It's because it's not from a trusted publisher and it's also doing things on your network to, to contact your key light. Don't be alarmed. Don't worry about it. I'm a trustworthy guy. <laughs> um, just go ahead and click allow, click OK, and uh, it'll work. Number one, and most importantly, it's free. Just like hitting the like button and subscribing if you haven't already. All right, guys, well, that about wraps up this tech vlog. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here and you subscribed, welcome and thanks for the sub. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.